Unit 9. 1. Castor Semenya is a world class runner from South Africa. She won the women's 800 meters in the 2009 World Championships in Berlin. Then some people started to doubt if she really was a woman. They said, She just looks like a man and her voice is very low. So she had to get some tests. However, we should remember that she was only 18. We should think about her feelings too. Of course, we know the test results. Semenya has much more male hormone than others. But is that her fault? No, it's not. She just was born like that. She neither took any illegal pills nor did anything wrong. Two. Do you know what was the most boring day in the 20th century? A computer programmer named William Tunstall Padot analyzed 300 million events on the Internet. After the analysis, he concluded that the dullest day since 1900 was April 11, 1954. On any given day, many events that later become historically important occur. Wars begin and end, laws are signed, and inventions get invented. But few of these kinds of events happened on that day. It's not that nothing happened, but that the events were so trivial, he explains. However, people have started talking about April 11, 1954, since William's announcement. Does becoming the most boring day in history make that day less boring? <laughs> Three. In 2011, America had its worst year of tornadoes in 75 years. A huge tornado killed around 130 people in Missouri. How is one of these frightening tornadoes created? A tornado tends to begin with rising moist air and high temperatures. As the ground heats up, moist air rises. When it hits the cool and dry air above it, It explodes upwards and forms a storm cloud. The rising warm air is hit by winds from different directions, making it rotate. A cone or funnel drops down from the cloud to earth. It's this that causes the damage. Then, why did America have so many tornadoes in 2011? A BBC weatherman explained. It has been very hot and sunny in the southern parts and strangely cold and snowy in the northern parts. So, there was a lot of cold and hot air to mix together. The cold and hot air made the huge tornadoes. Four. Piranhas are fish that live in lakes and rivers in South America. They are well known for their strong jaw and sharp teeth. The name piranha means fish with teeth in an Amazonian language. Piranhas eat beef, chicken, and smaller fish. Piranhas often attack cows and sheep, leaving only their bones behind. Sometimes they even attack swimmers, too. Many people are afraid that piranhas may attack and kill them as soon as they get into the water. Then, Do piranhas have nothing to fear? No, they have something to fear humans. People who live near the Amazon eat piranhas, and they say piranhas are very delicious. Piranhas are boiled or fried most of the time and often served with rice. The people of Brazil believe eating piranhas makes them stronger. In fact, more people eat piranhas than piranhas eat people. In addition, Piranha teeth are often used to make tools and weapons. Unit 10 1. Penguins, which cannot be found near the North Pole, are short and flightless birds. They look as if they were attending a formal dinner dressed in a tuxedo. Their food, such as fish and squid, is located underwater. So, they have adapted to the sea with their short wings. They are excellent swimmers, and this is where they use their wings. These birds use them to propel themselves through the water. 
Also, they take short flights, like hens, out of the water to come onto land. Penguins have short legs as well as short wings. So, they slide on the ice on their bellies when they want to move fast. Two. In 2007, Hollywood's King of Green, Leonardo DiCaprio, made the documentary The Eleventh Hour. He produced the film as well as acted as its narrator. The film covered the problems the planet's life systems are faced with. Over 50 of the world's greatest thinkers and activists, including physicist Stephen Hawking and Nobel Prize winner Wangari Maathai, helped make the movie. The most powerful element of the film is not showing a portrait of the planet in crisis, but instead offering hope and solutions. Without our efforts, there would be no hope for a brighter future. We already know what to do in most cases, and even when we don't, we know what directions to head for. DiCaprio says. Three. Have you ever noticed bare winter trees? Without leaves, the trees look so cold and dry. But surprisingly, they keep the grass below warm. Why? A leafless tree acts like a heater for the grass below. It would not be so surprising if we knew that everything on Earth gives off heat or light energy in the form of waves. Heat or light energy travels in different kinds of waves, such as infrared rays and ultraviolet rays, which cannot be seen by the naked eyes. A tree with its infrared rays gives heat to the grass below it and keeps it warm. Likewise, the grass does the same thing to the tree. So, both of them remain warm in winter. Then, what happens to the grass in a wide open area where there are no trees? The grass gives off infrared rays, but there are no trees to give infrared rays to the grass. Therefore, the grass gets frost all over it. Four. Madri the cat and Ketki the mouse were such good friends that they lived together. One day, they found a jar of sweet yellow butter. They put it in the hollow of the tree, but Madri couldn't stop thinking about the jar. How good it will taste! I wish I had some now, she thought. And she went to Ketki and told her she had to go to her sister's wedding. Madri went straight to the tree and she licked the jar. Before long, Madri said that she had a second sister's wedding. After a few days. Madri told Ketki about a third sister's wedding and went out. This time she ate it all. Several days later, they came to the tree and took out the jar. There was nothing in it. Ketki finally knew what had happened. And then they turned their backs on each other. That was the end of their relationship. Cats and mice have not been friends since.